Today we're going to take you guys through charging with a CCS rapid charger while you're on a road trip. So we'll show you just how easy it is, but a couple of things to keep an eye out for. So stay with us. So welcome to Electric Car Australia and 2022. This is our first video for the new year and I can't believe it's been about 10 or 12 weeks since we filmed our last video. So our regular viewers will know that the electric car family went for a summer holiday down to Hastings Point and um, yeah we had a fantastic time down there. We took our second car down as um, it can tow our camper trailer and uh, we had great fun down there. So I hope everyone else had a um, nice, relaxing and safe Christmas and New Year as well. We're still obviously dealing with this global annoyance um, of a health issue. So let's hope in 2022 we can put all that behind us. But look, enough of that. So we're going to show you guys today how you charge with a CCS rapid charger while you're on a road trip. Now we've done separate videos before on how you find these chargers etc because there's thousands of them around Australia so we'll include a link at the above sorry above the video to show um, you those so you can have a look at that but look basically this is a uh, tritium 50 kilowatt DC charger so unlike the other videos this is our third video in our charging series We'll include the link to the other two videos above. The first video was charging at home with a normal PowerPoint, which is AC charging. And that's obviously the cheapest and most economical way to charge. And also the most convenient because your car is charging while you're sleeping or you're at home, working from home, doing whatever else you do, so nice and convenient. Our second video, which will also include a link up above, that was the Type 2 AC charging. So that's the one where you might be at a motel or a shopping centre and they've got a charger there. So a little bit faster than at home. They'll put in about 25, 30, 40 um, kilometres per hour of charge. And that depends on the charger and also your car. And these guys here put in 50 kilowatts of DC charging. So this is the fastest type of charging you can have in an EV. And again, it depends on your vehicle, um, the capability of it, etc., how quickly it can charge. But these are the most common in Australia. They're 50 kilowatts, and that'll charge our MG ZS EV from 10% uh, full to about 80% in 40 minutes. So let's get this underway. So just using our MG as an example, nice and easy, we pop up that flap, we pull out these two bungs. Now the two bungs need to come out because this is the actual uh, DC charging connection down here, but I'll show you the CCS connector shortly, which is a combination of AC charging, which is that one, and DC down there, but it only actually energizes the DC. And you'll notice a bit of a silly design on the MG there where the charge flap uh, comes up and you have to sort of go down. Once you're used to it, you don't need to bend down, um, you just put it in. But the first couple of times you've got to kneel down, which is a bit annoying. And again, we'll include another link up above that shows um, our initial thoughts and some of the um, things that we like and dislike about the MG. So back to the Tritium Charger. Now this one has two connections, you'll notice. This is the CCS 50 kilowatt one, which we were just talking about. And this one over here is a Chatamo, also 50 kilowatts, DC again, but it's just a different connection type. So this is the Japanese type connection. So it's being phased out around the world, but that's the one at the moment that the Nissan um, Leafs use and some of the Mitsubishi or the old Mitsubishi iMovs. This is the one we're going to use today. And as you can see, it's the CCS with the DC below and the AC up top. Now look, it's as simple as that. You unplug it, line it up down there, push it in, you'll hear the charger beep. Now we'll tell you a little bit about this charger shortly, but basically it's as simple as pressing the start button. You'll notice it starts to energise. It's telling us we've got 10% charge in the battery on the car and it'll kick in shortly and show us it's starting to charge. So while we're waiting for that, just to show you a couple of things, there's a little pin that locks in on these. So once that's engaged and energised, you can't pull these out. So that's a safety thing. So what we can do now is um, we can go away, have a cup of coffee, go to the toilet, which I'll be doing shortly. You can see there, 
it's uh, 14 kilowatts now, so it's recognised a slightly different um, amount from when it first plugged in, and it's charging now because we've got 0.2 kilowatts. So look, that's as easy as it is. Now, different charges are different, so we'll talk a little bit about this um, one here. And by the way, um, these tritium charges, the head office, office for tritium is in um, Brisbane, in Queensland, where I live. Um, we do have some global leading uh, companies. So these guys have just listed on the NASDAQ stock exchange in the US. So that goes to show how big they are. Now look, they also produce charges, bigger charges. Um, charges go up to 350 kilowatts. Now there's not too many EVs on the road that can take that uh, capacity. Uh, the Porsche Taycan, etc., is one. Um, however, the newer, more modern cars with 800 volt batteries, etc., are certainly able to take those larger charges. But for the majority of you watching, and certainly for me, I don't need charge uh, speeds, anything like that. Um, our MG is capable of charging up to 75 kilowatts, um, so it can take a bit more charge than what this. Uh, charger provides, but for most people you'll never need it, so um, you don't need to pay the extra uh, money for it. Now back to this charger, as I said, nice and simple to use, it's got a start and stop button, so if I wanted to stop it now, I just press the uh, stop button. This is a free charger provided by the University of Queensland in conjunction with the Southern Downs Regional Council. So uh, Southern Downs Council provided the university um, some free real estate, I guess you'd say, um, to put the charger in a car park. So that was the donation this uh, Southern Downs Regional uh, Council made, and I'm sure they um, helped with some other uh, assistance as well. Um, you'll notice there is a couple of Type 2 chargers uh, there, but we've already done a video on those, so we won't talk about those today. But yeah, basically, um, the university have put the charger in, and they provide the electricity from this charger free of charge via their uh, solar farm that they've got here in Warwick. Now, that's a um, massive... Um, solar farm and we're uh, doing a separate video on that so make sure you click the bell icon so you're notified of that. Um, it's big enough to power 25,000 homes so a uh, huge facility. Back to this charger being free, so because it's free you don't actually need to do anything except plug it in, press start and when you finish press stop and away you go. Um, some chargers need an app, so they're a commercial charger and you actually pay for your charging and they need an app to um, turn them on and off, and that'll give you some stats as well. And as a backup, uh, quite often they have a um, swipe card as well. So again, we'll include a video above. We won't go into that today because we've done some road trips before where we've showed you using, um, finding the charges, using the apps and using the swipe cards, etc. Um, so browse our other videos and we'll cover all that sort of information off. Now, just talking about charge speeds again. So as I mentioned, these ones will charge uh, our car from about 10% battery capacity, which is about what it was now, up to 80% in about 40 minutes. Now, unlike petrol cars or diesel cars where you just put the nozzle in, you hold the trigger, you stand there and it fills the tank, battery cars and battery electric cars are slightly different. So they have what they call a charge curve. So when your battery's very low on charge, they will charge very quickly up to about 80%. And then they start to slow down. And the reason for that is that protects the battery. So you're not trying to jam all these electrons in really fast and um, the battery gets excessively hot etc. So I'll put a screenshot in there of a um, just an example curve so it shows you the the speed stays fairly constant till about 80 percent and then it slows down. So that's why when people say how long does your car take to charge from uh, flat? It's not really the question you need to answer because you don't run a battery uh, electric car right down to dead empty and it's not good practice to fill it up all the time unless you're going on big road trips. So what you normally do to keep your battery nice and healthy and make it last the longest is you keep it between 10% and 80% and it'll love you forever. And I'm gonna jump in the car because it started raining. Now look for the data geeks, we'll put a couple of screenshots in there. So um, we're currently charging at about 45 kilowatt hours 
um, DC. Now, as I mentioned, it's a 50 kilowatt charger, but you never get a full 50 kilowatts. So 45s, 46 is about the maximum you'll get. So um, we'll put a couple of screenshots in there. And also the amps, so we're getting about 110 amps at 400 volts because the MGZS, as most EVs in Australia at the moment, have a 400 volt um, battery pack. And also a screenshot of the battery cell temperature as well. So that gives you a bit of an idea of the temperature of the battery. Now, EV batteries are liquid cooled, so they have a glycol based coolant, uh, very similar to what you'll have in your petrol and diesel car. There's little electric pumps that pumps that around and that keeps all the electronics, the electric motor and also the battery pack nice and cool. So look, those couple of screenshots we put in, that's of an EV diagnostic and performance app. So we're gonna do a separate video on that one as well and take it as a, for a road trip shortly. So again, click that bell icon. Now look, I mentioned there's a couple of things um, you need to be mindful of with these chargers. So as I mentioned, there's heaps and heaps of them around Australia. Obviously, most of them are on the um, main routes. You can't 100% rely on the availability of a charger because there might only be one there. It might be in use or it might not be working. So how do you know that and what's the heads up? Well, again, we'll put a link into a video, but PlugShare is a global free app that you can download in your app store. And that's a fantastic um, tool that will show you where the chargers are in Australia, it tells you all about the chargers. And if the EV drivers have been um, nice enough, they can actually log on and say it's in use or it's not working, etc. So that's totally reliant on the EV community um, putting that information in, but it is really helpful and what you'll find is most EV drivers do do it. Well, here I am at my next charging stop just across the Queensland border at Tenterfield. And there's a couple of things I really wanted to tell you guys that I think is important that I forgot about at the uh, last stop in Warwick. So I've jumped in here. Now look, the key thing I wanted to mention was the pricing of um, charging at some of these uh, charges around Australia. Now the price varies from uh, free, as in the Warwick one, and also uh, this NRMA one here in New South Wales, up to about 60 cents is about the highest you'll pay um, per kilowatt hour of electricity here in Australia. And that's for the really um, uh, fast chargers, so the 350 kilowatt ones I mentioned. So yeah, you can budget about um, free up to about 60 cents a kilowatt. Also wanted to mention charging speed. So these guys theoretically will um, add about 300 kilometers of range per hour. And of course that all depends on your vehicle. Our ZS EV only has a 270 kilometer range in a 44 kilowatt hour battery. So without getting too technical, um, we couldn't actually charge our car for an hour because the battery is not that big. So it just gives you a theoretical um, amount of kilometres you can put in. So it's about 300 kilometres per hour on these 50 kilowatt chargers. Compare that to your portable charger at home that you plug into a normal 10 amp power point. They'll give you about 10 um, kilometres per hour. So yeah, significantly uh, faster and that's why you use them when you're on a road trip. Now, another practical little tip uh, I wanted to mention to you guys, uh, I mentioned the weight of the, the charge leads in the socket. Now, as I said, they're not that heavy, slightly heavier, I guess, than a petrol or um, a diesel uh, petrol pump. But when you plug them in, just make sure that you align the car to the plug. So you can see there, that's uh, fairly well in line. It's just a good distance. And the reason for that is you don't want any tension or you don't want to be pulling these leads sideways. They do have a lot of current go through them. And as I mentioned, there's a little lock, uh, locking mechanism that locks them in. Um, electric vehicles have a lot of different locations for the charge ports. So the um, MG obviously is at the front here. Uh, Teslas have them on the back um, indicator or tail light. Uh, some of the other cars have them here on the mudguard. So unfortunately, where you've got chargers and you've got car parks, it would be impossible for the charger providers to um, position the charger to suit every single car because there's such a difference in the locations of the ports on the cars. So just try and get your charge port as close as you can to the charger so that you're not pulling or stretching that lead. 
So that's it guys, I just wanted to jump back in and mention those couple of important things that I forgot to mention before. I was looking at the skies and it was uh, another shower coming over so I bailed out and I forgot to mention those. So let's go back to Warwick for the wrap up of the video. Well guys, that's about it. Just a quick short video to show you how you go about charging with a CCS DC rapid charger while you're on the road. And we'll just jump out and check how much uh, we've got to go. Because what I find with these chargers, by the time we get the kids out and the dog and we stretch our legs and we have a coffee and go to the toilet, the car's charged. They are really, really um, quick. So yeah, we've been here 12 minutes, we're up to 40% and we've put in 9.2 kilowatt hours of energy. So like I said, that might uh, sound a little slow, um, but I've been just sitting here talking to you guys doing a video. Um, so we've gone from 10% to 40% in 13 minutes. Now, if I had the family here, we would have walked over to the toilets, we would have grabbed a coffee, etc. Um, and that's the beauty of EV charging compared to diesel or petrol. So the key difference with an electric car is you don't need to stand uh, beside it while it's charging. Yes, it takes a little bit longer, but you're doing other things while it's charging. But other than that, it's very similar to using a petrol or diesel pump. As you can see, it even looks similar. It's got the cable, the plug. Now these cables on the 50 uh, kilowatt DC chargers, they're a little bit heavy. Um, the plug and the cable probably is about a kilo, kilo and a half when you're um, handling it. The bigger chargers obviously have a lot bigger cables. They have water uh, cooled cables so that there's actually water running in these cables on the bigger ones etc. Um, so they're heavier but again most people won't use those. They're a bit of a novelty really. Um, everyone that owns an EV goes and does it once or twice uh, to try them out but regular EVs and regular distances we're travelling we don't need those huge chargers. Well, that's it, guys. Thanks very much for watching. If you're one of our regular viewers, we really appreciate your support over the last 12 months. We've um, just notched up over 1,200 subscribers. And subscriber numbers are really important to EV um, or YouTube channels because it shows YouTube that people are interested in um, the type of material and videos we're producing. If you're new to the channel, thanks for dropping by. I really encourage you guys to also subscribe. It's a free, easy way to help us out. If you'd like to flick us a couple of bob via a PayPal donation, we'll include that link in our show notes as well. And we're currently saving up for another camera so that we can, um, while we're doing live drives, we can um, record the vision on the apps, etc., rather than having to do stationary sort of talks and then show you still um, screenshots, which is a bit clunky, time consuming for us and nowhere near as good as some of the other YouTube channels out there. So yeah, if you can flick us a few bob towards saving up for a second camera, that would be really appreciated. Now look, stay with us and hit that uh, bell icon as well because we've got lots more videos coming up this year. We'll be doing similar sort of content that we have done over the last year. We're also gonna look at some of the more budget friendly EVs that are coming out of China and we're hoping that we'll be in Australia shortly. And we're also looking at some EV trucks and machinery, farm machinery, that sort of stuff. Um, so not so much the big end of town, we're not looking at the, um, so much at the Teslas and the Ionic 5s and all those um, expensive sort of EVs. We're staying more in the market for the uh, everyday uh, budget Aussie that's currently got a petrol or a diesel vehicle and they're looking to move over to an EV shortly. So stay watching for those all coming up this year. Well, that's it, guys. Take care. Stay safe. Please look after your friends and family, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Cheers.